Today, let's see how to create a sci-fi barrier in Godot. Hi guys, Gabriel Aguiar here, currently developing Rabbit's Tail, links below for more, and I'm gonna show you how to create this cool sci-fi barrier with Godot GPU particles and the visual shader. It's a video full of tricks and tips, so let's jump right into this, and if you wanna get this project, I made it all available on my Patreons page, links below. So here's what we are going to create, this sci-fi barrier, we need a mesh, yes indeed, but let's start with creating a new node for the GPU particles 3D. Let's just rename this with F2, VFX underscore sci-fi barrier for example. And the first thing we need is a process material. If we click here we can create a new particle process material. It's essentially the particle system itself. And in the draw passes is where we can add our meshes. In our case, the barrier. Anything you model you can add here. By the way, this mesh right here is from this tutorial. Exactly the same one. And if you want to follow along and create the exact same mesh, I know it's for Unity, but what matters is the 3D mesh you are going to model. It's very straightforward, I left the link below. Just make sure you export as objects, instead of FBX, because Godot reads very well objects. Once you have the mesh, let's just say the amount is one particle, and it lives for 5 seconds. And it keeps on falling down because here on the particle process material, in accelerations, gravity should be at zero. So it stays exactly in the same position. Alright, looking good. What we can do is rotate these 90 degrees, so it's perpendicular with the ground, and then push this up in the Y axis, so it's easier to visualize the effect in question, right? Cool. Now one of the most important parts is the shader, the material itself. So down here, in geometry, for the material override, we want to click here and create a new shader material, the last one. If we click here on this sphere, it will open this material, and we want to make sure that new shader. It's very important that we select visual shader for the type and spatial for the mode. In my case, I'm going to save this in the shaders folder that I have on my project. We can call it the sci-fi barrier underscore shader tutorial in my case. Looking good. Create, yes indeed. And once you select here the shader, you will be able to visualize it on the shader editor. If this window doesn't appear, it's down here as you can see, shader editor. Alright, looking good. So what do we need here? Well, essentially texture. We can add a node with right click. We want to use the texture to the parameter so we can control the texture outside of the shader and directly on the particle system. This one is going to be for the main text, which is abbreviated for main texture. Down here we can drag a line and connect this to a texture 2D. Essentially we are going to use the dots texture, something like this, which I'm going to show you how to create. As a matter of fact, I have used the software made with Godot, which is Material Maker, I highly recommend it if you want to create awesome textures and materials. With this tool, you can create any type of material, as you can see, and once you have downloaded it, which is available on each.io, you can open it up and this is Material Maker. I already have some nodes here, but essentially what we want to do is search for a pattern. Generic, yes indeed. With this pattern right here, we want to increase the X and Y tiling, like 16 by 16 for example. And that's essentially it. Now all we gotta do is remove the black background. And the way we do it is with a colorized node. The first key, which is black, should also be with alpha at zero. As you can see now black is completely transparent and that's gonna be useful for us for our sci-fi barrier. Between these two, if you don't want these dots to be round, you can use a step node. By the way, every time you select a node you can preview what it is doing, right? And in this case, the value, if it's smaller, the dots are going to be bigger. And the wide will control how smooth they are, by the way. Replace the connection to Colorize. And with the Colorize node selected now, on this Preview 2D window, we right-click, we can go to Export and select, for example, 2048 by 2048. And then you can export this directly to your project. Call it the dots one text or something like that. Export as a PNG, yes indeed. 
once you go back to your project, you can now connect this text to 2D to the albedo. We just need to connect something to the alpha, so it has transparency. And what we can do is decompose a vector 4 and connect the last one, the W, which represents the alpha, the transparency, and that's it. Now we can select our barrier, and on the material override, on the shader, right, you can expand the shader parameters. And now you will find the main text. You can click and say quick load of the dots text we just created, right? And here we go, boom. We have this cool pattern. But if you look closely, yeah, the text is kind of stretched, which doesn't look good. So let's fix that. It's very simple. We have this UV input on the text 2D, which means, for example, we right clicked add a node for UV scaling. You can scroll all the way down. It's this one. Connect this to the UV. And essentially, the scale is the same as the tiling. Search for a parameter and create a vector 2D parameter. By default, it should be one by one, by the way. Connect it here. And now on the particle system, you can say, for example, on the X is going to be 1.6, and we have this round dots right you can duplicate this size you can make it half of the size you get the idea right you should rename it to main text tiling by the way i forgot sorry but now the cool thing is if we could break a little bit this pattern right and we can do that with another texture for the noise this texture to the parameter can be connected to a text 2d and the text we want to use in this case could be done inside Godot with a new noise texture, but I like to use Material Maker and I have also done it in Material Maker, this texture right here. Essentially, I began with searching for noise and using the FBM noise, there's plenty of noise by the way, and increasing the scale to 8 in the X and in the Y. And then I use the tones to control how much black or whites I want, right? I don't want that many blacks by the way. And that's essentially it. Now, I simply exported this text as a PNG to the project. And the way this works now is with a multiply. Make sure it's vector 4, where we multiply the main text with this noise. And then replace the connections. And what you will see is that nothing has changed. At least that's what it seems like at first. But that's because we need to assign the texture in the shaded parameters right here here we go but still doesn't seem like much it really depends on how many blacks and white values and gray values there are in your texture a very useful thing we can do is after the text 2d of the noise we can connect this to a power node replace this connection and this b value will control how much it will erode the main texture essentially as you can see we can indeed create a float parameter, call it the noise power, for example, with a default value of 1, connect it to the power, and now, yeah, in the particle system, you can say, for example, it's 3, 3.5. It will look a little bit more interesting, it will break that dot pattern. Now, it would be even more interesting if we could scroll this, if we could add movement to this noise texture. So, back here, let's search for a UV function node where it's set to panning. Let's connect to the UV of the text 2D. It may seem like it does do nothing, the offset. But if we create a time node and multiply this with a vector 2 parameter, which we can call noise speed, with default value of 0, 0, and then connect this to the offset, Cool thing is that now in our shader, we can say, for example, that it scrolls on the y axis 0 0.5 and it will add this very cool effect, right? Now let's add some color to this. For example, let's search here for input color so we can control the color directly with the particle system. This way we can also fade in and fade out. And make sure it's a multiply of vector 4. And replace these connections right here and to the albedo exactly now the cool thing is on the shader now we can go to display 
color curves and color for example we can go more or less around here select a cool blue like this and a cool trick is that if you go to raw mode you can for example multiply this value by 5 all of these values by 5 leave alpha at 1 by the way and here we go we get this really cool blue bright glowing by the way it's only glowing because I have a world environment with glow enabled yeah and here we go it looks much more interesting now now yeah I really think that this barrier will benefit if we add a cool fade in in the center down here let me push this all the way back and leave the color on the right down here if we add the node and go to the texture section you will find a UV polar coordinate which is awesome to create a circular mask for example if we expand this UV and turn on the eye for the red channel this is exactly what we want this circle where it's dark in the middle we can control the amount of dark we want with a power node and then yeah probably a float parameter will be useful and call it the mask power with default value of 1 connect to the power and this all of this is going to be multiplied before the color with a vector 4 yes indeed like this replace the connections once again and here we go we can already see that it is faded in the center and this really adds a nice touch for example now you can increase or decrease the mask power to your own taste even if you go to negative values you will get a bright spot in the center if you are looking for something more like that you know well you get the idea I think it adds a nice touch now one of the last things we can do is add like a border to all of this right that will look awesome so up here we are going to use another text 2d parameter for the border on the sampler 2d we want to connect this to a text 2d the text we are going to use is a border is a barrier contour or border it's essentially something like this basically if you go back to that tutorial after creating the mesh right we essentially export this uv layout so we can increase for example paint a border and then add a glow you get the idea it's everything on the same tutorial and you will create this exact same text that i have right here or at least very similar and once you have the text and get back to godot you can assign it here and the way this works is first we need to subtract this to the main texture so let's create a subtract node like this and then connect it to the multiply down here and this is what we get at first by the way this should be the opposite uh, like this and this is what we get essentially because in our particle system border texture is empty so yeah let's add it and here we go looking good or almost good as you can see there are some artifacts going on and it's essentially because we need to clamp this we need to clamp these values so they don't go below zero or above one right after the subtract we can use a clamp vector 4 just like this and then replace the connection down here and that's it much better now probably the border disappeared because it's totally black it's transparent it's not being rendered we have removed that part from the main text right so we need to add it again but this time we can add a different color to that part to the border so let's add a color parameter call it the border color multiply with the border and we are going to connect this after everything and before multiplying with the color basically right here as you can see and then replace this connection to the color and that's it it's totally black because that's the default color of the border color but now you can play with this and add for example an orange or you go directly to the raw values and for example say r is 5 g is 1 and here we go we get this very cool orange bright orange right look at this look how awesome it is 
because we have removed the border and then added the border again we can now control the color only of the border and the cool thing is since this is a particle system if we go to display up here on the process material on the scale create a curve and say it will grow a little bit in the beginning and then shrink at the end make sure it doesn't go all the way to zero I believe there is a bug if it goes all the way to zero it will disappear but you can create these little bumps in the beginning and a bump at the end and play and play a little bit with these handles so it kind of breathes a little bit and then disappears let me play this just one time one shot so it doesn't loop always yep we just need to fade in and fade out since we have access to the color via the shader we can do that for example on the alpha curve we can create a new curve push this key all the way up add another key more or less around here and another key at the end where it goes all the way to zero and then we can do the same in the beginning it will fade out right and now in the beginning it will fade in with another key just like this and if we play this looks very interesting it fades in fades out it grows you can add different motions perhaps create a different way on oh, how it appears and disappears right but you get the idea here we go we have a sci-fi barrier looking good and i made this entire project available on my patrons page links below and by supporting me you get access to a huge library of visual effects i want to say thank you to each patron that supported me last month and a quick shout out goes to the top tier patrons, which are Alberto Sageres, Alexei, Alien Alstad, Aviat Tobali, Cyber Cradle, Daniel Schmidt, David Molina, Diego Marcos, Lua Ama, Frosty Forty, Grub Lab, Jared Billy, Jonathan Carlson, Casey Miller, Lee and Holt, Matt Moore, Mike Bell, Loop SDA, Aubryon, Oitz, Pierre Mario Roux, Pradip Sen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, RVR, Shan Aguilar, Spence, Stefani Krasnowski, Strom, Team, very suited, whatever Marta, Will Poilian, Zoya Kanash, Bizina Seru, Tony Kato, Xian Pianlin, Min Jae Kim, and San Yan Yo. So, thank you all for watching. I hope you have enjoyed, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye.